In this problem, you have three media. You have air, where incoming light comes from. You have uh, magnesium, looks like some sort of magnesium fluoride material, or I don't know what it's called chemically. And you have glass. And uh, each one of those are higher than the previous. So if you have um, air at one, you got that sort of magnesium fluoride, I don't know if I'm saying that right, uh, film, which has an N of 1.38, and then you have glass of 1.5 index of refraction, you know that during the transmission of the incoming light, each time as it goes to the next media, there will be a reflected and inverted wave. So it's just good to know that it will be inverted each of those times, because that will help in, in talking about how uh, the, the reflected wave off of glass is going to cancel out the, the wave that's reflected off of uh, this particular film. So we want to make sure that they have a destructive interference as they're coming uh, off of these two media. Um, secondly, note that I am going to draw the wave, but it's not going to be consistent in the picture. So like, I will have a wave that might be squished off here just so I could fit it in, or it might be stretched out because I don't know how much of the wave is going to uh, need to be coming about here uh, a priori. I'm just going to be testing it out. So even though uh, in, in reality, a wave is consistent in length for each iteration of the cycle, I'm not going to make it that way. It's going to be compressed and stretched, but that's not going to reflect the reality of it. Um, so you, what you're going to do essentially is you're going to do a lot of guesses. And it would be great for me to do a lot of guesses as well, but for the sake of time, I'm going to give you the correct answer, which comes from maybe about two or three guesses. Um, one of the guesses, um, so first of all, let's talk about how the wave comes in. And we're going to make the wave come in where the very tippy top of it is at the boundary of air in this film. Um, and we're going to put arrows to indicate that it's incoming. Okay. So the reflected wave is then going to look like this. It's going to be inverted and uh, kind of mimic the incoming wave, but inverted, okay? So you'll see that in that case, it's going to interfere destructively if it were to interfere with itself anyway. Um, we'll call this reflection one. And then so the incoming wave that goes past this media is going to then, you know, eventually hit the second and then we could reflect it. So here's where we get our trial and error because you want the reflected wave off of glass to interfere with the first reflected wave such that it looks the opposite of it. So you want a reflected wave to, that eventually comes out of this coating to look like this. You want it to, to have this shape, okay? This shape it indicates, um, indicates a destructive interference. So that is the reflection that you desire. So you need something that that gets reflected and inverted because it gets reflected off of a higher index of refraction such that it comes out of this coating as a negative of the first reflection, okay? So the different choices you can make is you can put a whole wavelength in here, see how it reflects. So you have to invert it once it hits that and then have the whole wavelength come out and then see if it interferes with this destructively. Then, or you can have a half wavelength in here, do the same thing, invert it, and then have it come out and see if it destructively interferes with the first reflection. Uh, it so happens that the third option, which is have a quarter of a wavelength come in, um, have that inverted and then see how it interferes with the reflection, the first reflection, um, that actually ends up destroying it or being destructive. So let's look at how that comes about. So again, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and stretch this out because obviously the wavelength is this big, but I'm going to only going to put a quarter of it in, in this space here just so I can make this work. So the first thing I see is, uh, we're going to do here for my third trial here that I'm making really nice and pretty is I'm going to put the wavelength starting to come down here. And since it's a quarter of a wavelength, it's still going to come down here. Obviously, this, this right here should be about the length of this, but of course, I'm stretching it out again. And um, that means that once it hits here, the transmitted part is going to go keep going through and hit, hit the bottom and come back up. But the part that's reflected 
is going to essentially flip itself and invert itself. So <laughs> what that looks like is, and, and you just have to think about it and verify, is if it were to just reflect like a mirror, it would go down like that, right? Go down this way and then whatever. But not only is it being reflected, um, but it is also being flipped vertically. So it's actually gonna go back up because it's being flipped vertically, right? So it's gonna look like it's going back this way. Reflected wave in this case is going to appear, and I'm gonna to have to put it way down here, is gonna appear like this. Once the uh, reflected wave, and we'll call this reflection too, hits the first boundary, the coding to the air boundary, it's gonna then uh, see this sort of wave pattern, right? And that wave pattern actually follows what needs to happen. So that wave pattern being part of reflection two is gonna destroy or be destructive with the first reflection, okay? So uh, it so happens that a quarter of a wavelength uh, being reflected out and inverted, so that going back up like this, is going to destroy the first reflection. Okay, so they're asking, what is the thickness of this optical coating such that you get this destructive interference between these two, these two waves? And the answer is, well, this is a quarter of a wavelength, so it needs to have a thickness of a quarter of a wavelength. So the thickness of the coating must be one fourth of a wavelength. Now, since a wavelength is equal to 550 nanometers, then we can say that the thickness T being one fourth of that wavelength is gonna be 130, excuse me, 137.5 nanometers. Okay, and there you go.